Okay. We're recording now, right? Mm -hmm. You guys see recording? Okay, cool. So Vincent just, I, I'm in the Philippines right now, and Vincent was asking me if I'm trying to learn the language. The thing is that, I mean, I'm trying and I'm failing, but everybody here speaks English. And I, I also mentioned this with Susanna. Uh, uh, I think like, I mean, I try to learn it just because to just be nice to people here. People here like it when you try to learn the language. But I literally think it's a waste of time. I mentioned that with Mars. It's, I think in a couple of years, we're going to have such powerful AI that it's just going to translate everything in real time. It doesn't really matter what language you know. And so it's like all the investment and time that you put into learning a language is just going to go to waste. Okay, but what about when the AI shits on us? when we get wiped off the power grid. <laughs> I'm pretty sure by that time, learning a new language would be the least of our worries. <laughs> We're gonna be... I mean, it could still be for sexual selection. Like what? women might, like for sexual selection, women might be impressed by someone who actually took the time to learn the language rather than just using the AI. Vince that's, is newly that's... single, so this is what he's thinking about. <laughs> now, that I, now that I just got broken up with. Right. You know, I, I mean, I have to be very desperate to learn an entire language just to impress girls. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm not that invested. Yeah. I'll no. go, if that's the requirements, I'm gonna be like, okay, next, I'll go find someone else. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty like, swole, right? You honestly, you exercise a lot. Say that again. You exercise a lot, right? You're like you're a oh. gym gym rat. Well, I'm not really. Yeah, I do exercise, but um, I'm not trying to get any big. Like, what it was swole, you said? No, yeah, not that, not that much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, completely unrelated to what I just said a few sentences ago. But I'm thinking about starting to work out. This is something that I, I've been thinking about doing before the pandemic occurred. And I even had a three day membership, a free three day membership to a gym, and I started going, and then the pandemic sort of hit its flux. And... You don't need a gym, just get some dumbbells and a bench. Yeah, I just got, got some. I have some on my floor right here. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. He's got the grandma weights. <laughs> Which is good enough for me, for my little flabby arms. What is your goal? What are you trying to do? Gain weight? Lose weight? Both? I'm really skinny. Like, oh. it, it's it's not that easy to tell on the camera since camera adds weight. I don't know how many how, how many pounds is the camera supposed to add? I mean, for I don't know, like a I'm... television set, it's 10 to 15. But on a webcam, I don't know if that even applies. Mm. Yeah, well, probably not. But I'm really, really skinny. I'm un I'm technically underweight, so uh, I I'm pretty short. I'm like five seven, and I weighed before the pandemic. I weighed like 125 pounds. I've gained weight ever since um, social distancing occurred. So now I'm like 132. Mm -hmm. But I'm really skinny for my short my short height. Oh, by the way, Armin, I've been how how tall are you? Um, 173. 173 okay so that's like uh five nine around there no five, i wish five really? seven yeah five seven i think i'm not sure five seven okay so we're about the same height i think so this is why i moved to the philippines i look tall here oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh five foot eight. Oh wow that's pretty good i mean it's good in my by my standards mm -hmm. Right. I, that's not even short, you guys. Like, it it is. Yes, it is. It in, the, is. in the United States, the average height is five ten for men. Yeah, I mean, it, in America, yeah. 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 This is why. Damn this is why I got such a tiny wife to make me feel taller. <laughs> <laughs> I get a pocket wife. I'm ah, just, I'm so not sure that you. What? I'm sure she'll be happy to know that. <laughs> Yeah, she, yeah. I mean, it worked. It worked out. If I was tall, then she would be very tiny for me. But I noticed something interesting. It's that that's what I tell. Said... Me, that's what I tell myself to to cope with being so short emotionally. <laughs> 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 like it worked out. Okay, it worked out. Like... <laughs> I noticed that. Oh, when you said your height in meters and centimeters, you were sad about it. But when you said the same height, but you you translated, you converted it to in foot and inches. You got really happy that you were, I think, five foot nine. Even though technically it's the same height. 
Well, I mean, because a lot of people keep the, like deciding whether they're short or not based on what that. People are like, oh my god, the guy is five foot four, like, or like, oh my god, he's tall, he's like six feet, that's pretty good. Nobody, like, I haven't, so people, that's how you, they judge it. I've never seen people like, oh my god, I'm only 173 centimeters, like, because I, I, I haven't heard that, so I guess that's how you judge yourself. Not... I feel so bad for, like, for people, for guys who are like 5'4 or 5'3, I feel so mm. bad for them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Well, they, have, they have kings. less. You gotta send. Kings. You gotta send love to our short kings. <laughs> for our short kings. They, have, they have less privilege than a trans black female. Less privilege than that. Yeah, it's okay because it's also socially accepted to consider them as inferior some way. Yeah, there's studies out there that show that people who are shorter uh, don't get don't get the treatment that people who are average head or, or tall get. So like they're the worst off in job applications, the worst off in mating selection for sure. When you when you ask women, uh, Susanna can hear can attest maybe when you ask women what one of the main things that they look for in a male, one of the top five things is height. They they generally genuinely do like people, guys who are tall. It's true. So so it's John just, it's just fact. <laughs> so John Snow his act, well, who's the name of the actor? Like he was made oh, fun of. Oh, Kit Harrington, I think. Is yeah, that he his was. Name? Like, remember uh, Daenerys? I don't know if you guys watched the show, but he said, like, I would imagine someone taller. And some people made fun of him for being short. He's five foot eight, so he's my wow. height. So David Pakman is five eight. Really, David Pakman looks tall. Maybe he... because he's skinny. Made David a video Cabot about it. Is... But, but I think a lot of people like the fact that Jon Snow was short because they like okay, if, but everybody's like drooling over him. So I guess if he can, he he has a shot, then I people are like okay, so it's not that big of a deal. But the thing is that five foot eight is not really as bad as like five foot four. Or like I don't know. Like if he's cause like imagine if you're five foot four and people are like, oh John so is so short and he's five foot eight. Like you're like people are like, oh my God, I'm five foot four and they think that guy's short. That's like Tom a short Bruce? you're allowed to be before you're called a midget or a oh. small person. Sorry. Right. It's little yeah. person. Little Not person. small person. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Oh my God! You Tom, Tom Cruise what? Oh, Tom Cruise is super short. Have you seen pictures of him standing next to the head of Scientology, David Miscavige? David Miscavige is five foot three. Oh, oh wow! He's a pint-sized little dude, but he beats the shit out of his own congregation, literally. So, well, yeah, yeah, he does. Wait, he Tom Cruise is five foot seven. Really? Yeah. Wow. In the movie, here's a little fun fact, a random fun fact. In the movie Top Gun, the woman, uh, have you guys seen the movie Top Gun? Ages ago. Yeah, so a long time ago. I don't really remember much about it. I have no so idea. I, I just remember some planes flying. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the love interest in Top Gun is like 6'1". So when they, when they were in the scene <laughs> where they were making out, they had to give them little platform heels so it didn't look too awkward. Just move if you're sure. Just move to some Japan or the Philippines or something like that, so you feel normal. That's what. It, that's the entire reason why I moved here. There's no, there's no other reason. <laughs> I've been meaning to look this up. I have no idea what the answer is. But do you guys know what the evolutionary reasoning behind why some people are short, why some demographics are shorter than others? So why is it that the average height in China is like five four for men, and in the United States it's five ten for for men? What well, what's the reasoning behind that? They're just inferior in every way. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, just, the patron money. <laughs> oh, my God. Just, we're trying to keep this spicy. That's what I'm doing. By the way, like, uh, just, just in case Patreon office staff is watching this, I don't, that's a joke, okay? Please don't, please don't remove our Patreon account, okay? I didn't mean that, okay? Jesus, should I even put this okay. out there? You're gonna get dark. <laughs> God. Okay. Yeah. You put the last conversation on uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I am amazed that that conversation does not have so many more dislikes. Last I checked, it only had one dislike. I was amazed. 
We already <laughs> got rid of most of the people that hate us. That's why it's you know we lost a lot of people already. And th- unless we get rediscovered again, we're not gonna get that much of a backlash. Yeah, I remember some time back, Omin would have debates with like whoever, and the whole comments would be trashing Omin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have like two people supporting Omin, and everyone else just like calling you all kinds of names. <laughs> Right. There's so many times I hear like, I used to be a big fan of you until, and then there's like, oh, I used to support you so much until I saw this. And like, well, if you supported me until that, then you have no idea. Let me show you something worse that I said that is even like, you think that was bad? <laughs> I don't know. It's a hate You're such person. a troublemaker. Oh my God. You know what we would call you in my family? A trouble monkey. Trouble monkey. That's, That's what they call me. Is that racist? That's, not, that's oh. racist. That's, that's what so they call me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, we lost Vikram. Oh, no. I think he's he just, just doing off. something. Still, yeah. I'm just uh, setting some things up. So My he's, a, so much that. he's very interesting. Actually, you said mon- uh, trouble monkey. Okay. I, yeah, if you say that that's about any. The teacher would call me. <laughs> Okay, but that's fine unless some... Okay, that's very interesting, okay? So, you could call me a trouble monkey. You could call almost all of us here a trouble monkey. But if any of us here were was black, and you called us, me, like a trouble monkey, you would get into so much trouble. Uh, is that fair? That you could call all of us trouble monkey unless we're black? The it's reason is all fair. of our... <laughs> it's all about history, right? Why? Yeah. Okay, Vikram. Yeah, it's all about the history of it. So it's like, oh, like, I mean, technically my ancestors, because I'm from Mauritius, so my ancestors also were called these kinds of names. So it wouldn't, it would have kind of apply to me. But I'm guessing that if we look at a typical, I don't know, like a white guy or an Asian guy, it's very unlikely that their ancestors were being called monkeys on a daily basis. So that's where I guess the difference comes from. Yeah, but I mean, the int- all you have to care about is intention, right? Like if the intention is not to be that, then what the, you know. You can never know someone's intention and th- unless you can read their minds. So you, you can only just, look at the actions. We could be charitable. We could be charitable with what you think they meant. Unless they really prove to you otherwise, I think. I mean, if you know, like, if you know somebody is like, use the word trouble monkey all the time, if you could see, like, okay, they use it against other people that are not black, and now somebody is black and they're calling them a trouble monkey, you would be like, you have to be very uncharitable to be like, oh, we have a history of this, you shouldn't have used this against me. Like, come on, you can see that this person didn't, you know, that, that shirt, what was that shirt by what company? Oh, H&M. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, I right? remember that one. <laughs> like, they got so much shit for that shirt, but do you really think that they were, like, making that, like, shirt to be, like, racist to black people? Like, obviously, that's not their intention. So mm-hmm. get over it. Like, people are like, oh, but they should have known. No, they shouldn't have known. You're being racist by assuming that that's what their intention was. Like, I think... It's the same. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say it's the same thing with like the like whenever someone refers to the COVID nineteen as the Chinese virus, like is he being racist? Well, let's think about it. Have other viruses been named based on the location where they originated from? Yes. Is has he made any previous racist remarks towards Chinese people? No. So most likely he's not being racist if we're going to do a charitable interpretation of what he's saying. Right. Even if even if you, okay, you could also say I think it's unhelpful to call the Chinese ver- uh, mm-hmm. virus, yeah, sure. but I don't think you're being trying to be racist by doing so. Unless there's sometimes people make it very difficult for you to be charitable, right? So for example, imagine they're always calling it COVID nineteen, and then all of a sudden they're like, I'm gonna switch to calling it Chinese from now on. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, what what? Why did you why are you making that switch? You were okay with calling it the COVID nineteen <laughs> like so I think like sometimes people make it difficult for you to be charitable to them, right? But but if you can be charitable to their in- intentions, be charitable. Right? I don't know. There was a case about a Milo Yiannopoulos called someone a gorilla. I can't remember her name, but she was on Ghostbusters. Right. And she's Leslie like a black Jones. woman. Yeah, yeah, let's see Jones. But she's like a black woman and basically Milo called her a gorilla. 
And I mean, among a whole range of other insults, so he got banned from Twitter for it. Yeah, I mean, again, I mean, I'm, sometimes people make it difficult for you to try to be charitable. To them, yeah. Have you guys seen the most recent thing with the uh, people claiming that saying orcs are inherently more evil and violent? That's kind of racist. Oh, that was from like what? the Dungeons and Dragons oh, thing, Dungeons right? Dungeons and Dragons. People saying it's yeah. racist. People saying I can't believe in 2020. We're saying orcs are inherently evil. That's not acceptable. Why is this company pushing such racist material? Orcs, orcs, like in Dungeons Wait, and Dragons. Susanna, are like, you serious? Yeah, yeah. People are seriously saying this is racist and they should apologize. I like how is this racist? They're literally a different species. <laughs> They're not a human. Like people say, actually, that's very racist for people to. I'm ask not like, drunk what? enough for this. Like. <laughs> 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 she's, she's cool. Yeah. But whenever it... you go on, sorry. Uh, the way I look at it, because at this point, it's like when you're a company, it doesn't really matter what's like what's reasonable or not. It's more about what would get you more clients or not. So oh, if wait. it's yeah, we should have we should have before Susanna covered, we should have shown her. We should have highlighted her T-shirt. I forgot to do that. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just be careful. <laughs> we don't want to get banned. Uh, no, but sorry. Wait, gotta wait, get wait. that plug. Yay, yay! Get your t-shirts, link it, link it to the screen. Wait, I don't put... <laughs> That's great. We should cut that part out. That's great ad- advertisement. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, link in the description. You get your Atheist Republic merch. All right, go. Sorry, Vikram. Well, that's what I was saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was talking about, so when we look at this particular case, say a group of people are offended at a character in your game, since in the end the, uh, the company only wants to make more profits, right. should they then change the story to bring in those people? What? Like, no, I had praised it better Sorry, earlier. I was, I was distracted like, by Susanna. She's shaking. <laughs> so I think it was hard to, <laughs> it was hard to focus. Power of pity. <laughs> go, go, go. One more time. One more time. Uh, I'm trying to see how to praise it better. Um, so what do you think? So if a problem is that people are too, I guess, are getting offended at something so petty, what mm. should the company do it in response? What do you think? Would be best oh, for the company, the company to do. do? Laugh at them? <laughs> I don't know. Actually, okay, so the company, again, the companies are trying to re they're just trying to make a profit. They should just do an analysis like, is the backlash, maybe the backlash gets us free advertising or is the backlash going to get me people oh, like they should, they're going to reevaluate whether the backlash is going to benefit them or is going to get many people quit so they have to do like what percentage of our, our customers are woke <laughs> how many customers are going to lose how many are going to gain hey, hey Jack, Jack. Jack, hey, Jack how are you I just got back from a run so I'm a little late. <laughs> nice nice Little red the toast. <laughs> Good. Good like we're, we, were me- we were mentioning how uh, Dungeons and Dragons people are get the, is getting a backlash because they have new content. Like I don't know, it's cards. I don't know how they play that. But they were saying orcs are inherently like more evil. Um, they're more violent, and so I'm, that's a lot of people are, on Twitter are getting angry, saying this is racist against black people. Apparently, they said. This well, they racist- just say. <laughs> they are getting ratioed, so it's not like this is most of the people. It's just a right. small minority, and these people are getting ratioed. Yeah, but they also have a lot of likes. Like, they have a lot of like likes. A, yeah, 1,500. I think I saw the highest number one. Right. Okay. Yeah, so but it's... I feel like 1,500 is not, like... it's not that big if you consider the, the whole of Twitter. It's like yeah. kind of millions. Right. It's but, a fantasy game. Like, fantasy games depend on villains in 
weird, gross creatures. We've all seen Lord of the Rings. Like, that's part of a mythical world is having demons and having evil things that you have to go fight, right? Like, what's the point? <laughs> okay, but but I'm going to try to play devil's advocate. Actually, this is not devil's advocate. I do believe this. Uh, this is going to sound a little bit wokey, okay? If you look at um, the way World of Warcraft treats orcs, compared to like the like Lord of the Rings. I like World of Warcraft better. Like in Lord of the R- Rings and Dungeons and De- Dragons, the orcs are just evil, okay? But in World of Warcraft, you could start you see their perspective, you could like you see them as like so Uh-oh. Oh. Some of them are gone. We lost you. I love that freeze. <laughs> Taking a picture now. Yeah, take a picture. <laughs> like, print screen. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Oh, you're back. You're back. Yeah, I'm back. So how much of it was cut? Almost like all of, all of it. it. Yeah. All right. So I was saying, like, this might sound a little woke, but I like you know, World of Warcraft versions of orcs more than Lord of the Rings and Dungeon of the Dragon because you could actually relate to them a little bit in those. In those in, in, you could see them as the good guys. And I actually feel like you don't. I'm not like ang- like I think it's ridiculous to be angry with like thinking this is like not acceptable. But I do think that showing kids, you know, Harry Potter for example does a very good job at tackling racism. You know, pure blood, you know, versus non-pure blood. I think, and if you're like a fan, if you're like follow the stories of World of Warcraft and people seeing like orcs as evil, but somehow you feel like, oh, it's not fair to the orcs. They have their own priorities. They're just trying to survive. I think those are effective ways of, you know, making minds familiar to why racism is bad. I think it's an effective strategy. I don't think that's a... I, I don't I don't get angry over people that have creatures that are inher- biologically or inherently evil. I don't think that's a wrong thing to do, but I do appreciate trying to subtly change like expose kids to why racism and looking at some people inherently bad is the wrong thing. You know, is that is that wokey too wokey for you guys? Like I don't know. No, I think I think that's fine, but I don't think everything has to have a message in it. Some things can be right. fun just for the sake of being fun. I, yeah, uh, I didn't I, say I have to. I has to. I just say I prefer those those into those you know those yeah. stories. Yeah. And, and I actually agree with you in the sense that I appreciate the nuance more. Uh, I used to play World of Warcraft back in the day. I appreciate the nuance among the orcs more than I do in Dungeons and Dragons. I don't play Dungeons and Dragons, so I really don't know what their culture is there. But I appreciate. Uh, I agree with you. I appreciate the fact that they're not just evil, completely biological evil, as they're portrayed in D and D. Um, but again, it's, I, I wouldn't imagine coming up with the idea that this is somehow racist and they're alluding towards a particular race. I mean, it's racist of them to assume like, they're like, this is racist against black people and the orcs are literally not hu- human. So they're saying like, they're just assuming like, it, yeah. they're dehumanizing black people. Like, oh, this is like, they're looking at this and nobody's saying these are black people. And these people are like, the 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 vote <laughs> people are saying like these evil violent creatures in your stories represent black people. Like, wait, you are the racist here. Nobody's saying that. You are saying that. <laughs> I think it would be I think it would be different or maybe more understandable if these orcs had certain features or had phenotypes that were definitely calling on something that occurs in our real world. Like, where you're like, oh, that phenotype, like, looks a little familiar, and you're portraying this phenotype as, like, inherently evil. Like, then I would be like, okay, yeah, that's that's well, crazy. That's whack. Well, but well, The phenotype they're referring to is being violent, and they're, and they're saying, like, oh, that's black people. So they're the ones I'm wearing. Right exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what are, what are like, these, like, or, are these or things just, like, bad guys in the story, or are they, like, characters that people play? Oh. Uh, Wait, depends. Uh, Lord of the Rings or Dungeons and Dragons? Dungeons and Dragons. Because I know, no, like, I, I, I what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
like but, Dungeons and Dragons, like I listen, I've never played it, but I've listened to a lot of like podcasts that involve it. Mm. And if you, if it's a character, then really it's whoever, like in terms of like whether or not they're evil, it's like if it's a character, then you kind of create the backstory for that character yourself. So it's only like inherently evil if you only play it as an evil character. But most of the things I listen to, it's like if you take on that as a character, then, you know, you you kind of humanize it yourself just because you want to. No, but it's in the description it. of the game of the of the game that. But that, yeah, it's what I mean. You know, if it's like a, a bad guy that is part of the story that the dungeon master mm. like introduces then yeah that's that's different but if it's like a character that someone plays it's like well it's just like yeah, a same I, feel like, like, <laughs> I feel like we need more information we need to really understand from the other side why is it they find it problematic because right now i mean i don't know anything about the game so it's like i don't really have much to say here's devil's advocate you could say like you're introducing to people that it's possible for some for genetics to be involved in something being inherently violent and you're emphasizing the role of genetics versus instead of the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So that might be like, this is what you're teaching people, that it's possible for something to be, you know, genetically more violent. You know, yeah. well, I mean, it, but is it not though? Is it not possible for some races to be genetically more violent? Is that out of the realm of possibility? Yeah, by my understanding, it is when you contrast the two, <laughs> the the genetics is so like taken over by the environmental factors. But right. though it's not it's not fully negligible, but it's mostly negligible. Okay, when but you compare but, it but to think about what you're saying. But think of, because a lot of, this is what everybody says, right? People say it's mostly the environment. Okay, so every time you're saying it's mostly the environment, what you're saying indirectly is that it's somewhat also genetics. Because in, when every every time somebody says it's mostly the environment, they they're not saying it's only the environment. They're saying it's mostly the environment. So you're leaving some room for genetics. I mean, yeah, you you have to. Like, it's always always going to be a little bit of genetics to everything. Well, okay. So for example, the IQ gap, right? So first of all, the IQ uh -huh. gap between um, this is something that is real. Okay, nobody can deny this. For example, there's an IQ gap between uh, white people and black people, and there's an IQ gap between, um, you know, far far East Asians and white people. Okay, the IQ gap is real. Nobody can deny it. Anybody who denies that, I don't know what they're, you know, what they're trying to do. But the 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 main disagreements between people that who are not trying to deny data is that the IQ gap is either ex whether it's explained by environment or genetics, right? And most people agree that it, the IQ gap, it's mostly because of environment, okay? But again, if you say it's mostly the environment, you're, what are you saying? You're saying there's some explanation to, there could be some explanation to the gap because of genetics. Are you actually saying, let's say it's nine, let's say the IQ gap between white and, white, white and black people is 99% because of environment. So are you saying if there's one percent there's one percent um, of the white IQ gap could be explained by, by, uh, by genetics? And by the, by the way, the reason why people say in mostly the environment is because the gap between the IQ uh, is closing faster, is so fast that it can't be bio mostly biological, right? Mm -hmm. Like for the IQ gap to close that fast, we have to be evolving <laughs> right now. Um, within one or two generation, and evolution takes thousands of years. It doesn't take one or two generation, right? So, so the the closing of the gap shows that it's mostly environmental. But if again, if it's mostly environmental, that means that it leaves some room for genetics. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, it will always okay, so have that's, some that's room very for spicy. genetics. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, I mean, like, because uh, when we look uh, at Sorry, you can go ahead and ask him right afterwards. Oh, no, go for it, uh, by all means. So when we look, well, I mean, I, I took sociology a while back, so I'm going from memory. But uh, there's always been this fight between nature versus nurture. But the answer has never been just nature or just nurture. It's always a combination of the two. 
So the argument is not that, oh, genetics does not influence you at all. It's that no matter what disadvantage you get genetically, mm. to a huge extent, you can overcome it through environmental factors. Okay, but here I'm going to be more woke than more woke than you. Just because something is explained by genetics doesn't mean that there's going to be any differences between certain, you know, different populations or different ethnicities. Okay, so for you know, there are some things, for example, that we is completely heredity, right? But there is no sets of you know difference. You know, there are some things that you can see, like, for example, black people and white people are different genetically. Like there's certain kind of heart disease, right? Certain kind of, you know, athletic performance or stuff like that, right? But there are more things that there's absolutely no difference, even though they're heredity, even though they're genetical, right? There are certain, for example, diseases that there's no difference, for example, between white people and black people. And actually, you can find more examples of that than the things that they have differences, right? So given that there are many things that are absolutely the same, it is very likely that IQ, for example, it is all environmental. It is possible. Mm -hmm. And so far, we have not had anything to show that genetics has any influence, okay? It could, we could maybe find something someday but so far just it is heretical it, like it is like iq is like, again this is something that people can't deny heredity does have an influence on iq but just because heredity has an influence on iq that doesn't mean there's going to be any difference between black and white people on this it could be 100 percent um environmental any many any differences that we have so i that's what we are at right now. But the thing is that we have to prepare our minds for a day that might, with data comes out that make, may, maybe there's some genetics to it. And the, the problem is that even if we're looking at this, I think, completely in the wrong way, people are like thinking like people are trying to deny or accept data based on what they want to be true rather than what's actually true. And I think people are focusing um, on equality in the wrong way. Like we, and for a very long time, people have been obsessed over making people equal, not in rights, not in the way they're treated, but equal in everything. I, I think equal, fighting for equal rights should not be dependent on us being equal. You know, like even if it's not among races, let's say like, me and somebody else that is Persian, okay? I'm Persian, they're Persian, okay? Let's say we're as close as we could get. If I'm smarter than that person, that shouldn't mean that I get more rights, right? So, if, or, or, if, or if I'm stronger than that person, or if I get less sick than that person, or if I'm better in every way, let's say I'm smarter, I'm stronger, uh, that person is just so pathetic, in uh, under almost every measurements that you could come up with, they're just worse. Okay, I still should be able to enjoy the same rights as they do. Our right? Persian they... king, <laughs> <laughs> right? No, but, but I think I think <laughs> it's a problem to say like, oh, we need equal rights because we're all equal. No, we need equal rights even if we're not equal. Like we don't we treat people. I think the, the reason why we fight for people's rights is because they deserve, people deserve to be happy. I, I think our, you know, we deserve to be happy because anything that could experience suffering or happiness deserves the protection. In fact, actually, you could, uh, I think I'm going to get disconnected again. I don't know, I'm freezing. You guys can hear me? <laughs> Your face. We can hear you, but you keep We can hear some of you, but not all. <laughs> all right, okay, okay. I think I, you could argue the other way around. You could argue so, that... I'm back, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You could argue that if, if it's ever proven that purple people are inferior in to green people, then purple people deserve more rights because they're working with a disadvantage. Right? I mean, you could make the argument the other way around. You, they deserve more protection. They deserve, like, uh, to, 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 because 
we're not we're not fighting for equal outcome. We're fighting for equal opportunity. And if purple people have less biologically, they have less opportunity than green people. Then to make to make everyone have equal opportunity, they deserve more rights than green people. Yeah, I think you blew it out of the park in your analysis. And what's interesting is that I think what you said very much resembles. I forget what the name of the philosopher is, but he came. It might have been Peter Singer, actually, uh, when he was arguing for veganism, where he says where we have to harbor a society in which you're looking at it through the veil of ignorance. And if you were to immediately pop up into anybody, it doesn't matter who it would be. You'd basically have the same amount of equal rights. That's the way that we should view moral law. Um, right. But I think part of the problem also in having a conversation about race and IQ and how much of it is genetic, how much of it is environmental, is that the topic is so taboo that there's very little research done on it. I mean, Charles Murray got pretty much laughed out of the academy for right. publishing yeah. the bell curve. And even Sam Harris, he got pretty much so much hate for even having Charles Murray on his podcast. Yeah. And even and then Ezra and then from there you had the infamous Ezra Klein podcast. And Steven Pinker talked about this when he was on the Joe Rogan show, where it really is a shame that so many topics in academia are just taboo. It's not just race and IQ, but it's also whether or not there are gender differences. And so I, I've read articles that even go so far as to say that if determinism is real, then therefore that that is a huge hammer hammer blow to equal rights because that would by definition mean that you know evil people are not evil by their own measure that they're evil just by deterministic circumstances so therefore they're saying that you could genuinely be like like i i, I remember this article Ooh. specifically because i was so like angry about it where he said that racists are using determinism as an excuse just to be racist and it blows my mind and um that it's just, so that's why I always argue that these topics really shouldn't be as taboo as a species, as an evolved species of four billion years of evolution. We really need to take intellectual responsibility and say, like, yeah, there might be some uncomfortable truths that we might uncover, but we have to we have to look at them in the face and be honest about them and be be intellectually honest about them. It's very interesting when people try to use determinism for us not to be against people who do evil things because you could use that back against them like why would you get angry of people if they're if everything is determined i don't have a choice because i don't have a choice they yeah. don't have a choice <laughs> they don't have a choice to do the evil things they do and i don't have a choice when it comes to me trying not to, to stop them so back at you <laughs> but outcomes still matter by the way armin at that are you a, uh, i don't really know what your stance on free will is are you a determinist or are you a um... yeah no, I'm a determinist. Okay. Okay, but like so much so to the point where you're not a um, a uh, what's the term? Compatibilist. Compa yeah, compatibilist. I mean, compat. I mean, I okay. So if by compatibilist you mean like coming up with new definitions of free will to to differentiate between being holding a gun on your head and not holding a gun on your head, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, are, are you okay with like having a like instead of calling it free will, just calling it a will? I, I that's I mean I don't know what the best semantics are. I mean you could argue that when most people are using free will, they're talking about you don't have a gun on my head, so let's just use it as if it means that, right? So that's mm -hmm. the semantics argument. I just know that what philosophers mean by free, free will that doesn't exist, okay? And what people mean by free will that does exist, okay? Um, but I, I, I disagree with that actually, because Jerry Coyne talked about this. In oh his yeah, actually, yeah. I don't... When, when you ask most people what they mean by free will, they come up with a libertarian version of free will. Right. You're right. Okay. So, but we still need the word for, you know, we need to differentiate between people that like are mentally ill and they committed something and people who are not mentally ill because you could, if you, if you, for example, excuse people who are mentally ill if they commit a crime because of their mental illness, then people could argue, well, then we need to excuse everybody because, in the same way, they are, uh, they are victims of their, their brain as well, in the same way that a mentally ill uh, person is, right? So we need to just have use. It's hard to come up like, uh, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna, just gonna come up with a whole new vocabulary of words to differentiate with that? Like, yeah, that's gonna be difficult because there's just these words are already in circulation, and people are gonna, why are we, like, are we gonna not use the word forced? What are we gonna? It kind of seems like the whole new pronoun things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I gonna go out and say like, 
I was, I don't know, what's going to be the new word? If somebody pulled a gun on me and I had to give them my wallet, and they're like, I don't have it, I didn't have a choice. People are going to be like, well, technically, you don't have a choice to do it. <laughs> so, what am I going to call that? What am I going to call it when somebody's, I had to give them my wallet? What am I going to call, if I'm not going to call that a choice, what am I going to call that? So, I, I still <laughs> preserve those definitions if you refer to it as a will instead of a free will. I think the definitions would still apply. When you use words like forced, when you use like, I didn't have a choice. Well, I mean, if you use the word, the term will instead of free will, I think it still applies. People, like, I didn't have, yeah, I mean, I get, I just, people would be like, what is that you talk? Or like, I had, I had no choice, but I had a will. But, were, I mean, what? to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, most people in general don't care at all about determinism. Like, if I go outside and I ask someone what they think about free will, they, they wouldn't care, so... I don't think we would ever have this issue of like, wait, do I have a choice? Do I have no choice? Like, people will not start to. Most people there's more and more is is creeping into pop culture for people to start caring about it. Do you guys watch Westworld? Yeah. No, I've been meaning well, to. I only saw the first season. Mm. I only saw the oh. first season. It's beautiful. That set design is just. Yeah. Um, so it keeps getting so better and better. It keeps getting better yeah. and better. I'm not gonna give you any spoiler alert, but I'm just gonna mention something that is said in season three, but that is not gonna give away the story. But somebody is asked in the season three in one of the episodes that if if you actually have a choice in doing all these things or if you are in control, and that his answer is, uh, well, if you can't tell, does it even matter? Right. So, I agree. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of I mean, a lot of people are. I mean, the level of analysis, the level, number of YouTube videos that are coming. I think people are. I mean, if you keep watching, more and more movies are playing, and TV series are playing with these ideas. So I think may, they might not care about it now, but they, like just like AI, for example, right? A lot of people didn't care about AI, but there's more and more shows coming up with AI. Do you guys like? Do you guys watch the movie Her? That's one of my favorites. Oh yeah, it's right? great. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, people will think about these things at some point. It will become part of our. I mean, if you if you it, it will become part of like even if most people don't talk about it, it will get into a discuss. These these ideas will impact the decision makers in our justice system, for example, right? More and more people are going to come up with, uh, like more and more people who are lawyers or judges are going to get influence. They're consumers of these kind of ideas. And this, these philosophies are going to make them uh, think about it. So, for example, when, when you had the Enlightenment, right? How many people were reading Voltaire or Rousseau and thinking about all these ideas at that time. Not that many people were thinking about them, right? But mm -hmm. the people that were influence makers were reading them. So even though the vast majority of people don't read all these work of literature, it still revolutionized all of Western Europe, right? So it doesn't have to influence everybody. It just has to influence the right people. Like how many people, for example, watch Sam Harris, right? The, I'm pretty sure a lot of them are politicians. A lot of them are other philosophers that might write a book that is going to influence a, a you know, Supreme Court leader, a judge or something, you know? So it is going my, to influence the right people. We're going to. By my understanding, most philosophers don't like Sam Harris. They think he kind of makes, kind of, not a joke, but he makes philosophy kind of seem way too shallow because every time he tackles an issue, he doesn't really go in depth into them. So his responses to like the moral landscape and stuff like that, like yeah. most of our bigger philosophers don't like him. And there was even Daniel, Daniel Dennett, Daniel Dennett. Like yeah, I know. I've seen their fight. I've seen their fight. Yeah. Dennett, I mean, he's a he's like a like I guess like a proper philosopher. He has rebuttals to most of Harris' positions. But honestly, uh, yes, yeah, Dennett is a proper philosopher, and Sam Harris isn't. But if you look at the argument between Daniel Dennett and Sam Harris on free will, Sam makes a lot of sense, and Daniel Dennett doesn't. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> neither me nor you are philosophers. So it's hard for us that, to really comment on it. Okay, but no, yeah. it, you don't have to be a philosopher to for you to be logically anal analyze something if it makes sense or not. In fact, most of us here could look at a lot of philosophers through history and really easily recognize that what they said is horse shit, okay? Like, there are a lot, of, like, there are so many big philosophers throughout history that have some, said something 
That is so absolutely ridiculous. Philosophers are philosophy is not really a good methodology to come up with conclusions. Philosophy nope. is a really good methodology to come up with questions. Um, the scientific method is honestly the true method, the only true method to come up with answers. Questions mm -hmm. and hypotheses and claims that haven't been tested. Philosophy is really good for that. Okay. As someone but, who loves physics, it drives me insane when philosophers try to give their opinion on quantum mechanics. It's yeah. the worst. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Or yeah. neuroscience. And, and or yeah, and philosophers actually, when they w are trying to come up with conclusions, they're very good at making the most ridiculous claims sound incredibly intellectual, right? And a lot of times, when you take a lot of these claims that philosophers have made seem very intelligent, if you just remove the fluff and simplify the wording and just look at it like in what the core claim here is and just simplify it, you know, and just like look at it um, straight on. You're like, oh my God, that is the most insane thing that anybody, like a child could recognize what that, but it, why that's not true. Oh, right? <laughs> I just have a question. They're hot over there, Susanna. <laughs> uh, Wait, I, yeah, okay. So, uh, so earlier you said that uh, when you listen to Sam Harris and uh, Dennett uh, talk about free will. By the way, uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of breaking the spell by Daniel. Uh, like I like I really like that guy. But with free will, I'm more on Sam Harris' side than Daniel. Yeah. Dennett. and Daniel Dennett so, still likes Sam Harris. He, he, yeah, they're yeah. so big. They still like each other. Yeah, I mean, yeah, disagreeing on like a philosophy, or, like whatever. Like they're still friends even though they disagree. Um, my question would be like, uh, how do you determine that? Sam Harris is correct, but Daniel Dennett is wrong, considering that neither me nor you actually have any proper understanding, while Dennett is, under, his understanding is to like a much higher order than us. Like, Could, if you go, okay, so first of all, what they're talking about is not really that complicated, okay? If you actually go through the explanation of both of their position, if you completely understand what each one of them is saying in defense of their argument, then you're not missing out on anything. Do you know what I mean? Like you understand what Sam is trying to say, and you're trying to understand what, understand what Daniel is saying. Then you, you, you know, I think you're exaggerating how how much higher level they are compared to you. For you to like, I must be missing out on so much information here. You're not missing out on anything if you understand every single sentence that they're telling you, right? Unless they say something like, whoa, that went way over my head. I have no idea what they're saying. Then you missed out on something. But if, if every sentence they said, you understand what they're saying, you're not missing out something. Philosophy is not, okay, we have to understand, like, this is not rocket science. Like, philosophy is not something that, you know, that you, need, you need to be a, in a higher dimension of <laughs> brain waves or something for these concepts to to be for 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 you to be able to understand these things right like there are there are not the topics that are like that that require even the topics that are like that like like that like for example a neurosurgeon or you know uh, rocket science or you know brain surgery and stuff like that most of us here are not beyond that we just don't have the years of training that require us to get us there right but Philosophical concepts, it, most of them are not built on years of practice and training. They're just concepts. And as long as you have somebody, a little bit of practice and understanding of how to evaluate ideas, you know, you, you technically only need to know most of the logical fallacies out there for you to be able to be, and have practice with them on different arguments for you to be able to evaluate almost any claim, right? Like you could see like a lot of arguments, like who, who, was, the, uh, who was the philosopher that said like, oh, God exists because like if you, if you, if you imagine the highest being the, out there, that thing must exist and therefore, you know. Was that Jordan Peterson? No, that's not, that's way before. It's a very famous argument. I don't remember it accurately. Was it the transcendental but, argument or the ontological argument? Um, I forgot exactly how it goes, but this has been years. But for example, the argument that imagine the greatest being possible, okay? If you can imagine the greatest being possible, that greatest thing possible must exist somewhere, okay? And therefore, given that the greatest possible thing must exist somewhere, that thing is God, okay? 
that is the uh, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. But if you actually read the way that they argue it, it sounds incredibly intelligent. And it's been taken seriously by many philosophers for many years. For many mm-hmm. years, by a lot of philosophers. Uh, and that is that's insane. No, I feel like we find it insane because like we... Because I remember the argument. I just don't remember who said it. It might have been William Lane Craig, but I just don't remember. No, but, this is this is this is way older than these guys. This argument. Yeah, no, I mean they they retake old arguments and just kind of rewrite it. Oh yeah, yeah. But the the reason that I I probably disagree with almost everything you said. <laughs> uh, I I respect you, but just <laughs> but yeah, uh, the. Uh, when it comes to the structure of arguments, there's a whole range of them. Just understanding logical fallacies make us able to understand the basic uh, three syllogism. But there's multiple syllogisms. It goes like some people have like 15 premise conclusion. It goes way deeper than that. And unless you have a proper understanding of philosophy, we, we just don't get it. Yeah, I'm not dismissing those games that philosophers play. But again, it's not necessary for most of what you need to do to figure out what's bullshit and what's not bullshit. And the proof in that is that a lot of the people that do get that sophisticated in the way that they analyze and make arguments, they get a lot of simple things wrong compared to some people that just stick to, stick to the basics. But anyways, uh, let me see, uh, Vikram. Oh, did we lose Susanna? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think. No, no, I'm just going to the bathroom. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Jack, Jack, you have been quiet. Did you want to say your views on this? No, no, I, I kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm kind of on the fence. Like the whole like philosophy thing is something that's just kind of. I'm not uh, dismissing. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of up and down. Like sometimes it's like, oh yeah, yeah, it makes sense, and then sometimes it's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, I, I, that's it's kind of one of those things that um, I always had a problem with um, things that don't have like binary answers. Like I was always into kind of like physics and mm. and math and everything, where it's just kind of like one plus one is two, and then like this philosophers is- would be like, well, is it two? Could it be three? You're like, no, God, I don't, I don't want to get into this. Like, and I, so I like had problems with like English, where it was just like, well, what's your interpretation of it? It's just, oh fuck, and that's kind of how like philosophy feels for me. It's just like, there's no like absolute answer, and as we go through time, like we, that's what you're talking about, like going back in time, where you, mm. you know, like you, you think about what what old philosophers have said, and just be like, oh my God, that is just complete and utter bullshit. Right. But you know, so it's one of those things that it's, it's difficult to while I can appreciate that it is obviously like, you know, a lot of smart people, like it's, it's still like, are we going to, what, what's this going to be like in like 50 years? Are we going to look back at this and be like, what the fuck were you talking about? You know? So well, it's, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. I think that neuroscience is going to answer a lot of these questions right. and we understand such a, minuscule fraction of what our brains do neuroscientists like it is we still cannot explain how an arm is able to pick up a glass and bring it to our mouth Mm. like we have such a poor understanding yeah it's crazy it's crazy we know know what happens exactly after the command leaves the brain but we don't know how the command is made and processed in the brain but yeah you're right. yes yeah yeah so on the topic of philosophy i'm hoping i can be proved wrong on this because i was talking with Susanna about this and i said that philosophy much of it just comes across as pretentious gibberish so for example <laughs> this is one of slavoji's <laughs> ex most recent book uh We've sex been and the failed absolute a lot. <laughs> what's the book yeah. what's the book again sex and the failed absolute by slavoji okay. zizek well, I like I like Slavoj Zizek. He just recently came out with a book called Pandemic. I recommend you read it. Uh, but some of these, so, so this is one of the chapter names, for instance. And this is one of the things that makes me think that so many philosophers are just pretentious. Corollary three, the retarded god of quantum ontology. That's one of the chapters, in here. and all of the chapters are like this. All of the chapters are like like this. It it blows my mind. The persistence of abstraction. 
it, it, it like the uh, ibi rotis ibi sautis like it, it that's why like, i don't know can someone please convince me otherwise that so many philosophers so, aren't so just full of shit? I think good good philosophy <laughs> good philosophy is when philosophy is used to co- to come up with good questions, to structure the way we look at things, like to put everything in perspective, and also to give us a roadmap on what to look for next. Okay, that's when philosophy I think is useful. Bad. Philosophy is useless and, and harmful when really obviously bad ideas are made to look intelligent and sold to the public as something <laughs> and sold to the public as something that is beyond their understanding and otherwise rational people that could obviously some, why something is so obviously wrong are now convinced that this is just beyond their understanding and it could potentially be right but they are incapable of saying why this is right using mm-hmm. fluffy language and stuff like that. So that's why I think philosophy is used for bad in a bad way. I'm going to yeah. have to leave soon, so I'll just give my thoughts, and then you can all just refute everything I'm saying if you want. <laughs> <I'll say laughs> so, so when it comes to philo- the importance of philosophy nowadays, it's about it's more about when it comes to morality like and ethical decisions on if we have two really important things to do whenever when it, whenever it comes to feel like biology or business and things like that. Uh, most of us are not equipped to deal with it, while philosophers actually have a proper understanding of the different uh, theories, and then they are capable to come up with the most ethical discussions, uh, decisions, which is where philosophy comes into play. And earlier, there was a point that was brought up, but I didn't really respond to, and I'll just give my thoughts, and then I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, when Thank it comes you. to determinism, uh, determin- uh, I think Armin brought up that uh, determinism can be used to justify racism. Well, I'm not sure how. I didn't. Did I, I didn't say that. No, uh, I th- you say. <laughs> oh, you, Jesus oh, Christ! Oh, well, you said that. Remember when we were talking with saying that uh, many racists use determinism to say that why should we like these people? They are. They don't have a choice but to be like that. Uh, do you remember when you said that? Yeah, I didn't say I agree with it. I, I just. Yeah, no, just... no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You you would no, you just stated the opinion. You didn't say okay, you, you so agree. Okay, okay. It was me that stated the opinion. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> uh, I I'm not sure if that could be even possible because by my understanding, determinism would be that uh, every deci- every position you're at to make a decision, you didn't choose to be at that position, in spite of all the factors from ever since the Big Bang has led to you being in that place. So right. ultimately, the, the decision would be to change those factors around whatever group, you know, it's minority group, from LGBT groups to, I guess, racial groups, so like, uh, would be to change the factors around them so they wouldn't have to face, to be in the same positions rather than to try... You can, and... change, you can change the positions around them, you know, according to determinism. The factors around, you don't have a choice to change, the factors around them will always be the same factors. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically, factors, technically, technically, factors, yeah. technically, the model. Okay, so the determinism doesn't mean that there's only one outcome. Actually, the other way of looking at determinism is that all outcomes that are possible have happened, and that's just a multiverse theory. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. So, yeah. so every single second every single possible outcome happens and each one of those possible outcomes is its own universe and that's how you have infinite universes and just the final final thing uh earlier uh, when we brought up that there was a difference between when you said that science will take over philosophy so all the answers will be answered by science not philosophy who said that science uh you said it no, wait, you don't, you're not listening. You, did, you, <laughs> no, you said you would use the scientific method rather than philosophy. No, and then I did this, okay, was... but you rephrased it to something else. I said, for, for, I said science is good for coming up with conclusions. Philosophy is good for coming up with claims, good, well-thought-out claims that science could either prove or disprove. That means that philosophy will always have a role. You know, but, coming yeah. up with questions, coming up with claims, 
Then it's going to be replaced. I just think that they all, they they just need to know their place. Yeah, but the thing is that science and philosophy answer completely different questions. Well, philosophy is about the art or like the prescriptive statements, while science is about the descriptive statement, like how does things work? Yep. Like there is no art. I couldn't. Okay, so philosophy. There is no such thing as. Okay, so there if is you know art. I mean, okay, so. Yeah, that's going to be way too deep for this. This is going to go. This is going to. Yeah, this, this is going to go. This is going to open. <laughs> this is going to open a can of worms. But if, okay, first of all, you cannot. If you ever want to say ought to, it has to be dependent of whether a, a, a certain conclude destination destination that you want to get into or else it doesn't make any sense for you to say ought to right and if you have a destination in mind the best way to see how to get to that destination is always going to be science so that is the realm of science right so for example you say like we like we should do this well like we should do this why oh because we want to get we want humans to be happier okay so this then science is still your best bet because if you if if you want a certain um, destination given certain conditions how you get from A to B science will always be your best answer right I completely disagree but like, I don't have time right now like, yeah yeah okay let's have, that's, <laughs> gonna be, that's gonna be another day okay yeah thank you very much have a good night or good day wherever it's you're good at to see you again yeah have a good good night. Night. Well, me, too. we should all go it's one hour it's been one hour so let's stop yeah. let me wait let me just stop recording for now hold on